From the heart of American military innovation comes one of the most ambitious tank projects you've probably never heard of. The United States M1E8 a prototype, an experiment, and a stepping stone in the evolution of the Abrams family. While most people are familiar with the legendary M1A2 Abrams that has dominated modern battlefields for decades, the M1E8 represents a critical moment in American tank development. In today's video, we're diving deep into the origins, technology, design philosophy, and battlefield role of the M1E8. We'll break down why it was created, what made it unique, and how it shaped the future of U.S. armored warfare. Dash dash dash, section 1 The Origins of the M1E8 To understand the M1E8, we need to step back into the late Cold War and early post-Cold War years. The 1980s and 1990s were a period of rapid tank innovation. The Soviet Union had introduced powerful designs like the T-80 and T-90, and NATO nations were racing to keep up. The U.S. Army's backbone was the M1 Abrams, which had proven itself in Operation Desert Storm in 1991. But military planners were always asking, how can we push it further? How can we test new concepts without risking the proven Abrams platform? This is where the E designation comes in. In American tank development, the E stands for experimental. The M1E series were test beds, prototypes built to try out new technologies, engines, armor packages, weapon systems, or electronics. The M1E8 was part of this experimental line. It was not meant to replace the Abrams immediately, but to explore improvements in mobility, survivability, and firepower that could be integrated into future models. Dash dash dash, section 2 What made the M1E8 different? So what set the M1E8 apart from the Abrams tanks already in service? The primary focus was mobility and powertrain innovation. The standard M1 Abrams was famous, and infamous, for its gas turbine engine, the AGT-1500. While this engine gave the tank incredible acceleration and smooth operation, it guzzled fuel at a terrifying rate. The M1E8 project tested alternative engine configurations, exploring ways to keep the same battlefield power while reducing logistical strain. Some reports indicate hybrid diesel turbine concepts, while others suggest refined versions of the turbine with experimental cooling systems. Armor was another area of innovation. By the 1990s, the Abrams already carried advanced Chobham composite armor. M1E8 prototypes were rumored to test modular add-on armor systems, allowing the tank to be reconfigured depending on mission needs. Imagine swapping outside skirts, reactive armor tiles, or even experimenting with electric armor concepts. Power-wise, the M1E8 retained the tried-and-true 120mm M256 smoothbore cannon. However, the focus was less on the gun itself and more on the fire control systems. The 1990s brought rapid advances in thermal imaging, laser rangefinders, and computerized targeting. M1E8 tested cutting-edge optics and electronic integration, laying the foundation for the advanced digital systems seen in the M1A the 2nd of September series. Dash dash dash, Section 3 Testing and Evaluation The M1E8 was never mass-produced. Instead, it served as a rolling laboratory. Prototypes were tested at proving grounds like Aberdeen in Maryland and Yuma in Arizona. Engineers gathered data on engine efficiency, cooling performance in desert conditions, and maintenance demands compared to the standard Abrams. One of the challenges the M1E8 highlighted was the balance between power and practicality. American tank crews loved the turbine's responsiveness, it gave the Abrams almost sports car acceleration for a 60-ton beast. But commanders in the field hated how much fuel it required. The M1E8 experiments were part O. The M1E8 prototype carried over many baseline features from the Abrams platform, but every experimental program is about pushing limits. Engine and mobility. The heart of the Abrams was always its gas turbine engine. The AGT-1500 gave it 1,500 horsepower, moving its 60-ton frame to top speeds of 42 miles per hour, 67 kilometers per hour on roads. But the M1E8 explored alternative propulsion systems. Some versions reportedly tested diesel hybrid power plants, which promised greater fuel efficiency and easier logistics. The Army wanted to see if the Abrams' legendary performance could be matched with a less thirsty engine. The suspension system was also a point of interest. The Abrams used torsion bar suspension, which was durable but not always the smoothest ride. With the M1E8, engineers looked at improved suspension damping to reduce crew fatigue and increase firing accuracy on the move. Remember, 
A tank isn't just about firepower, it's about being able to shoot accurately while rolling at 25 or 30 miles per hour. Armor and survivability. Armor is what keeps a tank alive, and survivability was central to the M1E8 program. By the 1990s, the Abrams already used Chobham Composite Armor, a British-American technology that combined ceramics, metals, and other classified materials. The M1E8 tested modular armor blocks, essentially add-ons that could be swapped depending on threat levels. For example, against Soviet-style kinetic penetrators, you might load denser composites. Against RPGs or ATGMs, you could add explosive reactive armor era or later concepts like non-explosive reactive armor NERA. This modular idea eventually became common in modern tanks. Today's M1A the 2nd of September variants, for instance, use upgradable armor kits for urban warfare. Firepower and targeting. The M1E8 retained the 120mm M256 smoothbore cannon, an American adaptation of the German Rheinmetall design. This was already one of the most powerful tank guns in the world. But the big leap was in fire control systems. The M1E8 was a testbed for second-generation thermal sights for both commander and gunner. Improved laser rangefinders with more accuracy. Early forms of hunter-killer engagement systems, where the commander could spot targets independently while the gunner was engaged.